Howdy! It's Tubal Cain again, and in this video I'm going to attempt to uh, machine some of these very small brass fittings. Now these were given to me last summer by Jay Nelson out of uh, Pennsylvania, and I'm just now getting around to it, but as you can see they're a, a very small scale, and uh, these are little fittings that could be used in uh, steam engine and model work, and I believe they were cast and sold originally by PM Engineering. These were available in three sizes, and this is the smaller of the three sizes, and you can see that they fit in the palm of my hand, and on here, of course, is, uh, take a look, we got elbows, we got a coupling, we got a cross, 45 degree elbows, and T's. Now I've already cut some of them apart as you can see here so I can get started on these and I'm not used to working on uh, items this small so this is going to be challenging even for me so I got to think about how I'm going to hold these parts. That's the biggest uh, problem. How are you going to hold something like this? And I think I'll start with the simplest of course is going to be uh, uh, coupling. And these are brass or bronze, probably bronze, I'm not really sure because it's not real yellow, it's a little bit more uh, brown, and I'm sure it's free machining. These were probably, uh, I'm not real sure, but were probably uh, investment casts, but I suppose they could have been sand casts from a nice pattern on a match plate, but I'm not sure, and I guess it's irrelevant, but it should be pretty free machining. So thanks, Jay. I hope I can do these justice. I'm not going to do all of them, because at the moment I don't even have a use for them. I'm just doing it uh, as a challenge and uh, something else to show on my YouTube shop tips. You also will recall that I showed this in one of my videos that uh, my buddy Dave uh, who runs Mercer Locomotive and uh, goes under the YouTube name of Trainman4602 and I've talked about him quite a bit and he's quite a character, interesting man and uh, master machinist and uh, craftsman but he gave me, I believe it was after I had shown on uh, YouTube that I have these, and I said, well, I'm not even sure what size they are, but he said, he sent this for me, he made this for me, and uh, put it in the presentation case, and made the little plaque, and the box, and everything, and then inside of here are taps and dies that are for model makers, and they are the, the smaller sizes now, and these are tapered taps that are to be used uh, with, uh, well, we're going to call them pipe taps and pipe dies. And the smallest one is an uh, eighth inch, five thirty seconds, and then here's the three sixteenths, and that is the size, that is the size that I'm going to use, is the three sixteenths, and there's the die for it. And uh, fortunately, I don't have to buy any now, because these are quite expensive, but uh, thanks again to Dave for sending these along. And this calls for a number 23 drill. Tells right here what the, the tap drill sizes are. So that was he made that up too. That's really nice. Beautiful mahogany box. Let's get started. This is the coupling, and I'm debating how to hold that. But when I sawed this off, I left just a little bit of the stem with the, the idea that possibly I could hold it by that and in fact it's uh, not perfectly round here and it's just a little bit over quarter inch but I'm going to attempt to put it into a quarter inch collet. Then I'll face this end and then drill all the way through with that tap drill size, tap it halfway from one side and then reverse it and tap it from the other side and when I tap it from the other side I think I will attempt to hold it in uh, a little uh, brass uh, mandrel that I've already made and, I, and I've threaded that with the die here with this die so I have some way to hold it so let me see if I can get it in that uh, collet and set up in the atlas lathe well I did manage to get it in the 3C collet So I'll put that in the lathe, face it off, center drill it, 
and uh, drill it through with uh, this is the number 23. I'll meet you at the Atlas Craftsman. I paste the end of it and uh, I'll knock off the corner. I'm using needle files now and I, I need a glass to even look at the thing plus my optimizer so this is really small work and I prefer to use a regular sharp facing type tool uh, in this application rather than using uh, carbide. Carbide to me just puts too much pressure against it but I, I guess that's just me. I'm centered really. I don't expect this to fly out of the collet because I'm pushing straight in. But I think any kind of pressure this way would probably knock it out of the collet because I don't have very much uh, holding the work. And now the uh, tap drill size will go all the way through. I won't show that. Now I'm going to hand tap this. I'm not doing it under power. And that tap is held in one of these handheld uh, tap holders it will slide in and out and I'm just gripping it uh, right here on the neural surface with my hand so I have a feel for it and how deep do I go well this sure doesn't ap appear to be a very accurate tap holder either look at how that wobbles but it's uh, it's made in a different country than uh, what I live in but I have marked the tap as far as the depth because this coupling is so very short and I do have to th thread it from both uh, sides remember so I got a little magic marker on, line on there which you're not going to see and I'm pushing in to get it started takes no effort to do this and this uh, bronze ta uh, drilled so freely it's, it's very nice material very nice casting one more turn and I'm up to my line. Now if that's not deep enough I'll go back in and uh, tap it just a little bit more. But and remember that's a tapered tap. Not just a tapered tap, it's a tapered thread. It's a uh, all pipe threads are of course tapered and that's how they seal themselves. Well, it's now threaded on one end, and I'm holding it on this uh, brass mandrel, I'm going to call it. I tighten it on there, so now I'll go over and saw off the excess part here that I used to hold it. And again, the hole goes all the way through, so I don't have to worry about that. But then I'll put it back in the Atlas lathe, held by this brass. That can be a three-jaw chuck or whatever. And I'll face it. And, uh, matter of fact, I'm not going to saw it off. I'm going to face it off, come to think of it, and then, and then tap it. I just faced this end and chamfered it just a little bit with a needle file. And now I will proceed to tap this side. Now, I'm not using any kind of fluid because it just taps so freely. I suppose I could put a little on there, but I'm not in the mood. I gotta lock the spindle. The tap is now coming up against the brass rod, so that's as far as I can go. And if that's not deep enough, I'll come back and and uh, thread it just a little bit deeper, even if I have to do it in the bench vise. But out of the chuck it comes now. Well, there it is, the first fitting, the coupling threaded from both ends looking pretty good and that's the easy one that's the easy one just uh, in case you don't understand this is the uh, the tap wrench that I was using and this can be held in this particular case right in a 3 8 drill chuck this was held in the chuck 
and this slides in and out so it feeds itself and will hold taps. Uh, this is about the maximum size tap that it holds. Worked pretty slick though I must admit. First time I've used it since I've owned it actually although I have several other homemade ones that are of similar uh, uh, construction. Matter of fact I'll show you one right now. The uh, question of the day, I forgot to pose it earlier in the video, is uh, who and when was this uh, statement made? What evil lurks in the heart of man? Those of you that, uh, well you got to be pretty old to know that, but put it in the comments if you know who said, what evil lurks in the heart of man? Okay, this is the, the one I made back when I was in, a pri in my prime, I, I think before they uh, uh, made a commercial one. That's just half inch rod. I might have shown this before and this is a tap wrench that I, I modified to fit in there. And this can be taken out and the rod put in the other end and a one inch die put in that end so you can thread that way too. That was of my own design. Works quite well. Not sure why I bought this one, other than I had to have it. Next I'm going to tackle this tiny little elbow, and I'm going to do that on the milling machine just because it's a good way to hold it, better than the drill press I think. Although it could be done in a drill press. But I'm going to mill both uh, sides here in the same setup so that they are at right angles. Now I checked this with the square and it is not perfectly square. So that's a little problem in, in setting this up. Now when I drill these holes they're going to be blind holes. So this is an elbow, I think Imperial Company, and I sawed this in half just to illustrate to you how they did it. And you can see that they also are blind holes. So that's the way I'm going to do this and of course that's the way I have to. Now if it was necessary to have a flat bottom hole, a fellow could drill it and then go back in uh, with a, a flat bottom drill or an end mill, you know, to flatten the, the, the bottom, but that isn't really necessary. Just a couple words about pipe threads here and uh, this is just related information and it's free of charge but uh, before I, I get into this uh, I did uh, misspeak a little bit earlier when I was talking about uh, the company that made these as PM Research. I think I said uh, PM Industries or PM something or another but it's PM Research that makes these and has a complete line of models and, and uh, so on. And, uh, check their website out is pretty cool and they have a catalog as well but anyway the national pipe threads start at 1 16th 8th quarter 3 8 1 half 3 quarter 1 1 and a quarter 1 and a half and 2 inch and they go even bigger than this but they would be more industrial and commercial sizes but when I worked at a hardware store as a boy you know this is they made uh, all the pipe that we sold was really from eighth inch up they didn't do the the sixteenth inch because that's pretty small but what we have here and that, I, that I'm using today are the modelers pipe threads or uh, uh, tapered uh, yeah yeah they're pipe threads now they are one eighth, five thirty seconds, three sixteenths, and, and quarter inch, and that's what I showed you in the wooden case by Dave. These are the same taps, but there's also a five sixteenths, and the five sixteenths is in fact the same as the sixteenth national pipe thread. So I'm moving it over. It could go in either spot. Now was all of that clear as mud? I'm now at the Bridgeport mill and the little elbow is in the vise and uh, what I'm going to do first is to mill the top off flat and then I'll just bring the, uh, the milling cutter over here and cut with the side right uh, here and that will assure that those two surfaces are at right angles to one another. I'm 
taking light cuts because the work is held rather precariously. And here I am milling with the side of the cutter. And that's it. I'm ready to drill, I think. I'm now center drilling one side of the elbow, and admittedly much of this is just by eye. To, in other words, to find the center of that is just by eye. And I did attempt to center punch it, but I think I'd be just as well off rather than use the automatic center punch as to, uh, as to eyeball it with this small uh, center drill. Now I'm drilling with the tap drill size, and I think you can see the mark on the drill bit, and that's the depth, and I don't want to go all the way through and come out the back side of that elbow. Now I'm ready to tap. 